Hi, welcome back to McClatchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClatchy and today we are continuing our series on trigonometry by looking at angles of elevation and depression. We're going to firstly cover who the video is for, look at some new vocabulary, do a couple of worked examples and then talk about what's coming up next in the series. So this video is aimed at students in grades 9 and 10 for the Australian curriculum but if you're in grades 11 and 12 you recap trigonometry um, in a variety of different math strands so you'll probably see yours sitting there on the screen. Okay let's kick it off straight away and talk about some new vocabulary. We're talking today about angles of elevation. Now we get the word elevation from the word elevate which means to lift and that's where we also get our word elevator from. Now you probably think well a lift goes up but it also comes back down to the bottom floor as well. I know however we get the word elevator because it lifts things up so that's what we need to remember when we're thinking about elevation we're thinking about looking upwards. Now in trigonometry we consider lots of different kinds of problem problems but for angles of elevation and depression we are interested in the relationship between what we see and the horizon. Now if you think about when you look out at the ocean you see that line between the sky and the sea that is our horizon and so anything that's horizontal is on this angle it's sort of like the ground it's flat okay so we're interested in the angle between this horizontal and something that we're looking up towards so if we think about our eye looking out at something we're looking out straight ahead and then this angle of elevation is the angle that is made with the horizontal line and your line of sight so we've got this horizontal line that's sitting out here and then we look upwards towards an object that could be a bird flying in the sky it could be the top of a building it could be an airplane in the sky lots of things that we can look up towards so in this particular example we've got somebody who's standing in front of a tree their line of sight looks up to the top of the tree from the horizontal so it's always important to remember it's from the horizontal in this case the horizontal would be parallel to the ground wherever that person's eye is obviously your eye is not lying on the ground but that's there for illustration purposes and so that angle that is formed between the horizontal and your line of sight to the top of the object is that um, angle theta which is our unknown angle we call that the angle of L elevation. Okay, so that's angles of elevation. Let's do that in a worked example. We're going to use Polly as problem solving model. C plan do check today. So let's first of all look at the problem. Annabelle is 160 centimeters tall. She stands four meters from a tree and she's looking to the top of the tree and she sees that the angle of elevation is 30 degrees. How tall is the tree? Now you might be wondering how did she work out that the angle of elevation was 30 degrees? Well, there are actually instruments that you can use. They're called clinometers. And a clinometer measures an angle when you look at it. People that work in surveying use very fancy versions of those. So let's use the C part of the problem solving and work out what are the key pieces of information here. Well, firstly, we've got Annabelle's height. That's important because she's 160 meters tall. So when we work out how tall the tree is, the tree and Annabelle are both standing presumably on the same piece of flat ground so we need to make sure when we're working at the tree that we consider that her line of sight starts at her eyes so she's going to be looking up to the tree and we need to make sure that we factor in her height as well we know she's standing four meters from the tree and we're told the angle of elevation that's our three key pieces of information so we're going to start doing some planning by drawing a picture so i've got stick figure annabelle there with a stick figure tree and we have got her looking on the horizontal it's always important to draw your horizontal line from her sight, line of sight and we know that um, you can see the 160 centimeters I've got that up part way up the tree but it forms a rectangle so Annabelle's 160 centimeters tall as well and we've got her distance from the tree being four meters now her line of sight looking up to the top of the tree we're not told the length of the line of sight so it's not really important in this particular case but we know that this triangle that's formed is a right angle triangle and we're going to call the unknown variable the height of the tree um, less than 160 centimeters is going to be called y so we've labeled that on the diagram so now we've got a fully annotated picture that could actually be worth some marks in an exam so it's important not to just try and do it without drawing a picture okay let's do a little bit more planning we'll put the 30 degrees angle in there that really helps us then to work out what formula do we want to use well we have an adjacent that's our four meters okay it's adjacent to that angle of 30 degrees and we've got an opposite which is y so we've got an opposite got an adjacent think about our trigonometry formulas using Sokotoa, Toa, 
meaning tangent equals opposite over adjacent. So we're going to be using the tangent formula. Okay, so now that we know we're going to be using the tangent formula, it's time to do it. We're actually going to substitute the values into the equation. So we know that the theta angle is 30 degrees. We know that the adjacent is 4, so 1030 equals y over 4. Now we're going to try and get y all by itself to solve. So we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by 4, and we end up with y equals 4, 1030. Chuck that into your calculator and press the equals button and you'll get y equals 2.31 meters. Now, if we just have a quick look at our triangle over there, the height of the tree is not 2.31 meters, just the component not including Annabelle's height, which is y. So we need to add the two together to get the full height of the tree. So 2.31 plus 1.6 gives me 3.91 meters. Okay, now we've got to do the check component. A lot of people don't really know what they should be checking for. Sometimes they just look at their work and go, okay, well, I've checked it. Well, we know the tree height is 3.91 meters. We first of all need to do a logic check. The tree should be taller than Annabelle, and we know that it should be taller because she's looking up to the top of the tree. So if the tree was shorter, she'd be looking down or looking straight ahead. So that tree is taller, so it's going to be a logic check. Yep, we need to make sure we wrote a statement and not just wrote why um, plus 160 because we need to make sure that we're answering the question. The question asks how tall is the tree? We give an answer as a statement. So yes, we've done that. And we've used units of measurement um, being meters. So correct as well. So we've solved that problem. Okay, let's look now at some new vocabulary. We've got angles of depression. And this comes from the word depress, which means to push, push down. So you can depress a button when you push that button down. It's also where we get the idea of depression from. So a good way to remember it is that if you're feeling depressed, you're feeling down. So we're actually looking out and then finding this angle that's formed when we looked down into the future. Some people th might think that trigonometry is a little bit depressing, but I say no to that. I love trigonometry, but I'm a maths nerd. Okay, so here we go again. We've got our eye looking straight ahead, and we're wanting to look at this angle here that is formed by looking down to the object from the horizontal. So this is the angle in here this time. So before we looked up from the horizontal, now we're looking down from the horizontal. Here is another example. I've got a lighthouse here. So my horizontal, if I'm standing on the top of the lighthouse, I'm looking straight ahead. That horizontal is going to be um, straight out into the sky. And then if I'm looking down at a boat, my line of sight is the um, straight line down towards the boat. And this angle inside those two lines is the angle of depression. Now, we also know that that line of sight when you're up somewhere high runs parallel to the ground, or in this case with the um, nautical um, example, it's the C. So we can see here that it forms a Z. And the parallel lines, um, when they form that Z angle, it's called an alternate angle. And so we know that we've also got this line here, um, angle here, because parallel lines form these um, alternate angles which are equal to one another. So that's something important to remember as well. When you're trying to set up your triangle um, to solve a problem, um, you might have the height of the lighthouse. Um, so having the height of the lighthouse on this side might not help you solve something on this side. However, if you remember that they form one big rectangle that's made up of two parallel lines, then you can actually find angles inside triangles. Okay, now some people, and I see this quite a lot in exams, make the mistake of thinking that the angle of depression is located here. Okay, so from the line of sight, um, between um, the line of sight and this straight line. Well, no, it's always from the horizontal. If you make the mistake of thinking that it's there, you're actually going to be out by 90, take away the value of the actual angle of depression. So you're going to be quite a bit out. Your answer will be very wrong. So it's important to always remember where that angle of depression is. This is probably the most complex part of this kind of thing. So if you can nail this, you've got angles of angle elevation and depression. Let's try this with a worked example. We've got a lighthouse standing on a cliff two meters above sea level and the lighthouse is 83 meters tall. A boat is 30 meters from the cliff. Calculate the angle of depression from the top of the lighthouse to the boat. So once again, we are going to do some poly problem solving model and we're going to see what's the important information. We've got the height of the cliff. We've got the height of the lighthouse. So the height from sea level will be the cliff plus the lighthouse's height. We've got the boat. We know how far away it is. This time we're trying to find an angle of depression. 
Okay, so let's draw a picture again. So I, it doesn't need to be as elaborate as my drawing. It can just be a very simple triangle for a boat and a square or rectangle for your lighthouse. Okay, so I've got my boat. It's 30 meters away from the lighthouse. And I know this lighthouse is going to be 83 meters tall plus the cliff, which is at sea level, plus two meters. So that whole height is going to be 85 meters. Then I've got an angle of depression from the top of the lighthouse to the boat. So remember, that I've got this horizontal line. It's very tempting to draw that angle inside the triangle that you formed, but you cannot because it is formed with the horizontal at the top. So that's an angle on the outside. However, knowing what you know about parallel lines, you can now place an angle inside your triangle in order to solve the problem. So that angle pops down here where it forms those alternate angles. Okay, so it's just really important to remember you need an angle inside the triangle to solve but you can't get that without using that parallel line theory. Okay, so now we need to choose a formula. So what we've got here is an opposite. We know how tall the lighthouse and the cliff is. We've also got an adjacent again, which is the 30 meters. So you guess it, we're gonna use that tangent formula all over again. So let's use our formula and solve. Okay, so firstly, I've got my opposite, which is 85 over 30, which is my adjacent. And if you recall from our previous videos, if I want to get theta all by itself, I have to find the inverse of 10. So you're going to press that shift key on your calculator and then shift and then the 10 button and then 85 divided by 30. And you're going to get the angle of depression is 70.6 degrees. And it's always important to write a statement at the end because you don't see theta in the question. So you have to answer worded problems with statements. Now it's time to do that sanity check. Okay, does it make sense that the angle is 70.6 degrees? So firstly, is it less than a right angle? Because you know it's inside a right angle triangle, so it has to be less than 90 degrees. So yes, it can't be a negative number either. That would not be logical. Did we write a statement? Yes, we did. The angle is 70.6 degrees. And do we have units of measurement? Yes, we've got the degree symbol. So we've done the check. Also a good idea as well to double check your diagram and make sure you've put that angle of depression in the right place. Okay, that's one of the most common mistakes I would see with this question is people putting it up at the top of the lighthouse inside the triangle when it should not be there. It should be on the outside of the triangle to begin with. Well, that's all we have time for in this video. What is coming up is very exciting if you're a trigonometry freak like me. Um, we've got bearings, non-right angle triangles, more complex problems to help you prepare for your exams. And then we're going to move in some, to some of our advanced mathematics unit circle trig functions for our senior mathematicians. And I would like to say, if you found this video helpful, please tell a friend or tell your teacher, subscribe to our channel and tell us in the comments. It's always really helpful um, for me to get feedback from you so that I can make sure I provide you with the most quality information. And why not follow us um, on McClutchy Maths by subscribing to the channel. We've got loads of new subscribers this month. Um, I couldn't even fit them all on the one page. So next video, there'll be more subscribers there. So welcome to the channel. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for um, staying with us. And why not follow us on Facebook and Instagram? It's a great way to stay up to date with new videos when they're released, as well as other information, fun facts and competitions from time to time. Well, I'm Natalie McClutchy. If you've got any questions at all, feel free to email us at mcclutchymats at yahoo.com and have a wonderful day.